Toyota Shaw Incorporated v. Court of Appeals, GR, No. 116650, May 23, 1995. Opponent D. Justice The Vida, Jr. Summary, Bernardo, a sales representative of Toyota, assured Luna Souza that a Toyota Light Ace would be ready for pickup on June 17, 1989. Bernardo signed the agreements between Mr. Souza and Pepon Bernardo of Toyota Shaw Incorporated. The agreement provided that a 100k down payment will be paid for the balance. The parties executed a document which provided that the balance would be paid by credit financing through Bia Finance. The next day, Luna delivered the down payment of 100,000 pesos. On June 17, 1989, no Toyota Light Ace was delivered. Luna asked that his down payment be refunded, and Toyota did so on the very same day. Soon thereafter, Luna Sosa filed with the RTC Marinduque a complaint against Toyota for damages. Toyota argued that there was no sale entered into between it and Sosa, that Bernardo had no authority to sign the agreement for and in its behalf. Bernardo signed the agreement in his personal capacity. RTC ruled in favor of Sosa. It ruled that the agreements between Mr. Sosa and Pepon Bernardo was a valid perfected contract of sale between Sosa and Toyota which bound Toyota to deliver the vehicle to Sosa. CEO affirmed in toto the RTC decision. Toyota, hence, filed a petition for review on certiorari before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court reversed the decision of the CA. It ruled that there was no contract of sale between the parties since what was agreed upon was only the payment of a 100k down payment. No definite agreement on the manner of payment of the price was perfected as Bia Finance disapproved Sosa's credit financing application. The Supreme Court stressed that a definite agreement on the manner of payment of the price is an essential element in the formation of a binding and enforceable contract of sale. Likewise. The court noted that no specific reference to a sale of a vehicle was made in the agreement. Lastly, the court pointed out that the agreement shows the absence of a meeting of minds between Toyota and Sosa. For one thing, Luna Sosa did not even sign it. For another, Sosa was well aware from its title that he was not dealing with Toyota but with Bernardo and that the latter did not misrepresent that he had the authority to sell any Toyota vehicle. He knew that Bernardo was only a sales representative of Toyota and hence a mere agent of the latter. It was incumbent upon Sosa to act with ordinary prudence and reasonable diligence to know the extent of Bernardo's authority as an agent in respect of contracts to sell Toyota's vehicles. A person dealing with an agent is put upon inquiry and must discover upon his peril the authority of the agent. Facts June 14, 1989, Luna Sosa and his son, Gilbert, went to the Toyota office at Shaw Boulevard. There they met Papon Bernardo, a sales representative of Toyota. Luna emphasized to Bernardo that he needed the Toyota Light Ace not later than June 17, 1989 because he, his family, and a Balak Bayan guest would use it on June 18, 1989 to go to Marinduk, his home province, where he would celebrate his birthday. He added that if he does not arrive in his hometown with the new car, he would become a laughing stock. Bernardo assured Luna that a unit would be ready for pickup at 10 a.m. on June 17, 1989. Bernardo then signed the agreements between Mr. Sosa and Pepon Bernardo of Toyota Shaw Incorporated, which stated the following, 1. All necessary documents will be submitted to Toyota Shaw Incorporated. Pepon Bernardo, a week after, upon arrival of Mr. Sosa from the province, Marinduque where the unit will be used on the 19th of June. 2. The down payment of 100k will be paid by Mr. Sosa on June 15, 1989. 3. 
The Toyota Shaw Incorporated light ace yellow will be picked up and released by Toyota Shaw Incorporated on the 17th of June at 10 a.m. It was also agreed upon by the parties that the balance of the purchase price would be paid by credit financing through Bia Finance. The next day, Luna and Gilbert went to Toyota to deliver the down payment of 100k. They met Bernardo who then accomplished a printed vehicle sales proposal, the SP, number 928, on which Gilbert signed under the subheading Conform. June 17, 1989, no Toyota Light Ace was delivered. Bernardo told Souza that the car could not be delivered because someone influential got the unit. Toyota contended, however, that the Light Ace was not delivered to Souza because of the disapproval by Bia Finance of the credit financing application of Souza. It further alleged that a particular unit had already been reserved and earmarked for Souza but could not be released. Due to the uncertainty of payment of the balance of the purchase price, Toyota then gave Luna the option to purchase the unit by paying the full purchase price in cash but Luna refused. Luna asked that his down payment be refunded. Toyota did so on the very same day by issuing a Far East Bank check for the full amount of 100k. Soon thereafter, Souza filed with the RTC Marinduque a complaint against Toyota for damages under Article 19 and Article 21 of the new civil code in the total amount of 1,230,000 pesos. Toyota's answers, 1. No sale was entered into between it and Souza. 2. Bernardo had no authority to sign the agreement for and in its behalf. Bernardo signed the agreement in his personal capacity. 3. The VSP did not state date of delivery, Souza had not completed the documents required by the financing company, and as a matter of policy, the vehicle could not and would not be released prior to full compliance with financing requirements, submission of all documents, and execution of the sales agreement slash invoice. 4. Also. The 100K was returned to and received by Souza. On February 18, 1992, RTC Marinduque ruled in favor of Souza. RTC declared that 1. The agreements between Mr. Souza and Pepon Bernardo was a valid perfected contract of sale between Souza and Toyota, which bound Toyota to deliver the vehicle to Souza. 2. Toyota acted in bad faith in selling to another the unit already reserved for him. CEO affirmed in toto the decision. Hence this petition for review on certiorari by Toyota to the Supreme Court. Dash. Issue. Whether or not the agreements between Mr. Souza and Pepon Bernardo was a valid perfected contract of sale between Souza and Toyota. Held. No. Pertinent laws, Articles 1458 and 1475. 1. No obligation on the part of Toyota to transfer ownership of a determinate thing to Souza and no correlative obligation on the part of the latter to pay. Therefore a price certain appears in the agreement. The provision on the down payment of 100,000 pesos made no specific reference to a sale of a vehicle. If it was intended for a contract of sale, it could only refer to a sale on installment basis as the VSP executed the following day confirmed. But nothing was mentioned about the full purchase price and the manner the installments were to be paid. The Supreme Court had already ruled that a definite agreement on the manner of payment of the price is an essential element in the formation of a binding and enforceable contract of sale. This is so because the agreement as to the manner of payment goes into the price such that a disagreement on the manner of payment is tantamount to a failure to agree on the price. Definiteness as to the price is an essential element of a binding agreement to sell personal property. Two. Moreover, the agreement shows the absence of a meeting of minds between Toyota and Souza. For one thing, 
Luna Souza did not even sign it. For another, Souza was well aware from its title, written in bold letters, which is agreements between Mr. Souza and Pepon Bernardo of Toyota Shaw Incorporated. That he was not dealing with Toyota but with Pepon Bernardo and that the latter did not misrepresent that he had the authority to sell any Toyota vehicle. He knew that Bernardo was only a sales representative of Toyota and hence a mere agent of the latter. It was incumbent upon Souza to act with ordinary prudence and reasonable diligence to know the extent of Bernardo's authority as an agent in respect of contracts to sell Toyota's vehicles. A person dealing with an agent is put upon inquiry and must discover upon his peril the authority of the agent. At the most. The agreement may be considered as part of the initial phase of the generation or negotiation stage of a contract of sale. How about the VSP? The VSP, on the other hand, was the second phase of the generation or negotiation stage. It must be emphasized that thereunder, the down payment of the purchase price was 53,148 pesos while the balance to be paid on installment should be financed by be a finance corporation. In a sale on installment basis which is financed by a financing company, three parties are involved, the buyer who executes a note or notes for the unpaid balance of the price of the thing purchased on installment the seller who assigns the notes or discounts them with the financing company, and the financing company which is subrogated in the place of the seller, as the creditor of the installment buyer. Since Bia Finance did not approve Sosa's application, there was then no meeting of minds on the sale on installment basis. We are inclined to believe Toyota's version that Bia Finance disapproved Sosa's application for which reason it suggested to Luna Sosa that he pay the full purchase price. When the latter refused, Toyota cancelled the VSP and returned to him his 100k. Sosa's version that the VSP was cancelled because, according to Bernardo, the vehicle was delivered to another who was Mars Malakas does not inspire belief and was obviously a delayed afterthought. In paragraph 7 of his complaint, Luna Sosa solemnly states, On June 17, 1989 at around 9.30 o'clock in the morning, defendant's sales representative, Mr. Papong Bernardo, called plaintiff's house and informed the plaintiff's son that the vehicle will not be ready for pickup at 10 a.m. of June 17, 1989 but at 2 p.m. of that day instead. Plaintiff and his son went to defendant's office on June 17, 1989 at 2 p.m. in order to pick up the vehicle but the defendant for reasons known only to its representatives refused and or failed to release the vehicle to the plaintiff. Plaintiff demanded for an explanation, but nothing was given, end of quote. The VSP was a mere proposal which was aborted in lieu of subsequent events. It follows that the VSP created no demandable right in favor of Sosa for the delivery of the vehicle to him, and its non-delivery did not cause any legally indemnifiable injury decision, the petition was granted. The decision of the CU as well as that of the RTC Marinduque were reversed and set aside and the complaint was dismissed.